from stray to survivor, a Spokane cat is now in search of her forever home. We'll introduce you to this kitty who actually survived breast cancer. Computer modeling shows more snow redeveloping tonight. I'll have a look at your complete weekend forecast next. Have a great day. Thank you. Hey! Well, this man and his group are dedicated to their cause. No matter the weather, they spread a little cheer with a simple message displayed on their sign. Good evening, everyone. It's good to have you with us. I'm Jane McCarthy and I'm Mark Hanrahan. A winter weather advisory is in effect for nearly all of the inland northwest. The snow taking a break right now, but more is on the way. That's right. Tom Sherry in the Weather Center tracking snow totals across the region tonight. Hi, Tom. Lots more snow on the way tonight and again Saturday into Sunday. As you mentioned, winter weather advisory in effect everywhere you see shaded in yellow. It includes Spokane and Coeur d'Alene. Winter storm warning in effect through Sunday morning and across areas of central Washington and these slopes of the Cascades and look at the Puget Sound, the Seattle area. Same color because it also has a winter storm warning in effect. The west side of the state and these slopes of the Cascades are getting a lot of snow, more snow than what we'll see here in eastern Washington. Now this graphic represent what we think is going to be additional snowfall totals through Sunday. So what you've got on the driveway and on the front lawn right now, this will be added to that. We could get anywhere between three and six inches of snow in portions of Spokane, our little microclimates, meaning the South Hill, the Airway Heights up to the north side. Uh, Coeur d'Alene could get another three to four inches of snow. Out in Wenatchee could get another 12 to 18 inches. Chelan could see another eight to 12 inches. And Moses Lake uh, could see another six to eight inches of snow by the time we're done by Sunday morning. Another band of snow is just to the west of the Spokane area and it is headed our way and there's more where that came from. There's a closer view that we've got a little light snow that's redeveloped across the Spokane area. Not as heavy as what we saw earlier, but now as you look out towards uh, Grant County and uh, towards Lincoln County, you can see more snow beginning to redevelop over there. And again, that's all headed from west to east. It's also going to be bitter cold. We'll look for an overnight low of 9 degrees. Tomorrow's high only 17. Poor visibility expected because of blowing snow with wind gusts up to 40 to 45 miles an hour. We don't get a reprieve on Sunday. We'll see a little lingering snow continued. Bitter cold with a morning low of 7 and a high of 16. Hope you'll stick around. I'm going to run the future tracker computer model. I'll tell you when the next band of snow should arrive and also your complete weekend forecast. Thank you, Tom. Meantime, the city of Spokane doing a full city plan tonight between 50 and 60 plows, de-icing trucks and more are out on the streets. With all that snow expected this weekend, the city says it could take several days to finish the full city plow. Let's go now to Thomas Patrick in the mobile storm tracker to get a closer look at conditions right now. Thomas. Yeah, guys, glad to hear that some of those snow plows will be out on the streets because they could use at least a little bit of work. We're back on the South Hill. We're on the intersection of Regal and 57th at the moment. We're at one of the stoplights, but as you'll notice, once we get moving here, there is at least one lane of road that is clear enough to use at about speed limit throughout most of the major roadways in Spokane. But I'll tell you what, as that light snow continues to fall and as it it just stays cold outside. It's about 21 degrees out here. Well, some of that grooving, some of that pavement that you can see in front of us is slowly going to shrink away and get replaced with just a little bit more of that fine snow, especially as the traffic goes away for tonight. So even if we get a whole lot more snow or maybe not a whole lot more snow, it's the winds that's going to get us for tomorrow because that powdery snow is going to blow around so easily. It could easily blow back onto the road. So please be cautious for that, not only tonight, but throughout the day for tomorrow. Reporting live from the Storm Tracker, I'm meteorologist Thomas Patrick. Back to you. Thomas, thanks so much. And for anyone with plans from the west side to or from the west side, Spokane International Airport says the inclement weather could potentially delay flights. So make sure to check your flight status. This is the Spokane Airport's website you're looking at right here. And a quick check shows some flights from Spokane to Seattle already delayed or canceled tonight. Well, road crews in North Idaho are faced with a tricky situation. What to do about a large dip in the middle of I-90 in Kellogg? The Idaho Transportation Department is asking drivers to slow down in the area. That's in the short term. As Krem 2's Taylor Vito explains, fixing the problem could require some serious long-term work. It's not too hard to notice. 
We slowed down going over the dip, as ITD says you should, and still it was very noticeable. Well, I only went over it once, but it's really bad. Lynn Edmonds has been driving around here for years. He noticed the dip for sure. So did his old pickup. But if that gives in, that could be a really deadly situation. ITD announced the depression just this week. It's most noticeable in the eastbound lane just before the Kellogg exit. Staff were out taking a look today. ITD says they think the dip is being caused by water running under the freeway. This part of I-90 is right up against the Coeur d'Alene River. But that's not normal. There's something underneath that that's void. You know, there's some earth just empty down there. ITD says they're looking at options to temporarily fill in the dip and make the road smooth. But the long-term fix is what could be tricky. Fully fixing the dip could mean digging down deep below the highway and reconstructing the road base. No word on how long of a process that could be. It's no secret that this part of I-90 sees a lot of traffic and gets a lot of use. Parts of the road west of here have seen work from ITD in recent years, too. For now, the agency says a temporary fix could be in place by next week, and drivers will have to take it slow. But uh, maybe Creme 2 will come out and fix it. We'll try our best. Okay. <laughs> in Kellogg, Taylor Vido, Creme 2 News. Amazing to see that one day everybody loves it and everybody's so excited to get up in the morning and get ready to go to school. Spokane Public Schools taking a different approach to designing their three new middle schools. They asked students what they wanted their school to look like. And they have some pretty interesting ideas. Krem 2's Alexa Block tells us what these students have in mind. They learn not only from books, they also learn how to become good citizens able to earn their living. Classrooms have come a long way since the 1950s. There's been a lot of changes to how students learn and how teachers teach. And Spokane Public Schools is entering a new era and students are excited to be a part of it. <laughs> it's a meeting of minds. Spokane school leaders and faculty are working on plans for three new middle schools. And they've enlisted the help of some experts. We want to try to bring the outside insides. Actual middle schoolers. Prior to this meeting, about 35 middle school students from around the district were brought together and asked what they wanted in their new middle schools. We were just in groups and we just talked and were honest about how we were feeling and how, um, and how we viewed, like, school. Eighth graders Ken Love Stenson Oakley and Emily Richardson shared their ideas with the group. I think we're all asking for really a variety of places to work and natural light and colors, things that are different from the normal today. It's too structured for us and we just, we're, we can't learn, not all of us, not everyone is learning in that environment anymore and we need to change and adapt it for everybody to be able to get what they need. The final plans are still a ways out and the vision of the new middle schools have yet to be realized. But for these students, there's no going back, only forward. It's kind of mind blowing that that we're going to change uh, the future of generations of students for the better. The kids are going to feel more passionate about being there and learning, and they're going to love the environment more than they have now. In Spokane, Alexa Block, Creme 2 News.